Okay, so what's going on? So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at Unreal Engine 4.27's new feature, Path Tracing. So yesterday, I uploaded a video inside Omniverse Create using Path Tracing, pretty much just showing you why I think Omniverse is really going to do some damage later down the road. But what I'm going to do today is just show you the Unreal Engine 4's version of that. Now, one of the biggest difference right now when it comes to Path Tracing is UE4 uh, 4.27 does not support multi-GPU as far as I know. I read it in the documentation. So pretty much if you have like a dual setup, dual GPU setup, uh, you can use that in Omniverse, but in Unreal, you just can't, all right? So let's go ahead and take a look here. Now this uh, here is the car configurator, the Audi. Car configurator you can download from the Epic Marketplace for free. This is a pretty good, simple scene, but it shows and showcases pretty much ray tracing, which is nice. So what we're going to do first is let's go ahead and make sure everything's turned on. It should be because this project has ray tracing on. Yep. RHI, and I'm going to go right here, Drax X11 and 12, so that's good. And right now we're just in the lit mode. And one of the things that I was excited about is, as you all know, I have the new RTX A6000 GPU. Uh, so I'm using that right now. And that thing has 48 gigs of RAM. So we should be able to push this a lot more than we could with the RTX 3090. Okay, so to enable the path tracing, it's really easy in the editor. So if you go to lit right here, and you're gonna turn it on. And as you can see, it does that little, you know, like dotted, uh, visualization similar to like Arnold or V-Ray. If you've rendered anything offline, you were, you're going to be familiar with that. So if I move my mouse right here, you're going to see that it's going to do that calculation. And as you can see, the A6000 is doing a pretty darn good job here. But then again, we haven't really tweaked a lot of settings. So with that being said, let's go to our post-processing volume here. And let's go to the scene atmosphere because you can actually control the path tracing right underneath the ray tracing right here. Path tracing, you have this new option. Now, the sky is black, so I guess we can take care of that as well. So if I go to the sky, just make sure that we have real-time capture enabled so you can see that sky back like that. Okay, sorry. Let's go back to post-processing now. Go here in the scene atmosphere, and let's turn it on. So I'm going to turn it on. It's going to have 32 bounces. I'm going to decrease that to 1 so you can kind of see the difference. I'm going to go 1, 6, 3, 4. That's a lot. So let's go to 12 right now so you can kind of see where we're coming from. I'm going to turn on the width right here. I'm not going to turn on emissive and materials. Max exposure I'm going to turn on so we can get rid of those firefly effects that I freaking hate. This is actually and this is actually turned up to 120 screen percentage. So for now, we're going to turn it to 100. Okay, so this is our starting point, And as you can see, it's really, you know, it doesn't look as good. And if I go to like lit, yeah, the lit version looks better. Now, the difference between lit and path tracing, and this is real time right here. All right, so it doesn't look good, but you know, it's not that bad. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to path tracing. It's going to calculate it. And I think what I'm going to do next is just show the uh, progress bar at the bottom of this. If I go to output log, if you don't know where that's at, go to window and then go to a developer tools, go to output log. This is pretty much your uh, command prompt here. And I think it's called progress display. And if you need more information about this, check out the documentation. It's like half a page. So I'm going to go ahead and go right here and then I'm going to go press one. And what that's going to do is actually show me the progress bar so we're not just guessing when it's done loading. As you can see right there, it's showing up. And let's start, you know, increasing the settings here. So let's go with like 60. And as you can see, just right off the bat, that just really made this scene a lot better because what that's doing is it's just increasing the bounce lights, right? Now you can actually see more of the flats. You can see some of the clouds on the car itself, which looks really freaking nice. And the pixels right now, a sample is only 12. So let's go ahead and increase that to like 60. And like I said, I haven't tested this out prior. So if I crash, <laughs> you know what happened. But as you can see right here, we got a 60 to 60 now, and that's looking nice. Now I'm going to compare it again to lit, right? So it doesn't look that bad. It looks pretty good. And then if you have a RTX or GTX 1060, this is what you're going to see right here, which looks pretty good. I mean, if you're into that, I'm going to go to path tracing right here because we do have that A6000. So I'm going to walk around here. See some of this stuff. Now, they do have some material incompatibilities, per se. And as you can see, you probably see it in the Chrome right here. Uh, so it's not 100% functional, per se. And it's doing a pretty good job loading that, to be honest. It's pretty, that's pretty fast. All right, and make sure for reflection, we have ray tracing on. Yeah, it's on. Okay, and then what we'll do is 200 for the screen percentage. I mean, we're really going to make this graphics card cry. But it's doing a pretty good job still. Okay, and what we'll do is increase the samples. Let's do 1,200, so let's double that up. And to kind of showcase this a little bit better, what I'm going to do is actually take a screenshot of this. So I'm going to do a print screen, and I'm going to take it to, like, paint. So here's one right here. 
And what we're going to do is do like 1200. And again, once that's done loading, I'm going to print screen that and then open this up. So we have a 1200 right here and I'll move this to the right and that will move the other one to the left. So you can kind of see it side by side. So we have what? Uh, we have this, this is one. And then we have this one right here, uh, it's 1200. Now it is, it'll, it, it is subtle per se, but you can still see the difference, especially right here. You see this area right here? I mean, you got, the, it, this just has a little bit more uh, detail up here, so you can see, and this one looks kind of just like a color red, uh, and that's pretty much it. So that being said, let's go ahead and exaggerate this a little bit more. So let's go like 9999, there you go. Starting to look really nice. And even that specs right there is nice, and we'll close this now. Okay. Now, additionally, uh, you don't have to do this here. You can actually export this now. And like I said, there's two ways to turn this on or use it. So the other way is if you go to Movie Render Queue, and I'm just going to choose whatever car reveal, go to the settings. There's actually an additional setting here now called the Path Tracer. You just accept that. And additionally, if you're trying to do this, go ahead and turn on your NTL aliasing or turn it off because you're actually going to override it to none and then change this to whatever your card can pretty much handle, which in my case, uh, maybe a 16 I can do here or a 32. And after that, you can render that and now you're going to get that path trace export. So you just don't have to do it in here. You can also export it with the, uh, with the movie render queue. So I'm going to dismiss this. And the last thing I'm going to do is actually bring out my favorite Space Marine, because I want to see him in this environment as well. So I'm going to go ahead and hide this right here. I'm going to go to Visible, go to Hidden, and I'm going to hide that in game. Because what I want to do is I want that, um, I'm going to increase this just a little bit so that he has, you know, room. So I'm going to go 5x5x5, five by five by five, and we're going to drag and drop our uh, Space Marine. And I'm going to delete this for now because I don't want it messing up the Space Marine um, lighting and stuff. So I'm going to drag and drop him here. And yes, he should be compatible with this path tracing. And as you can see, he looks pretty freaking good. And I'm going to take him and I'm move him to the side. And then we're going to combine the two. And drag and drop right here. I'm just going to get him in the scene here and turn off the snap. It's pretty annoying. Okay, so let me make sure his foot's touching. It's good. And what we'll do is uh, we'll get that car back. So I'm going to click the car. And then uh, we'll get the hidden properties right here. All right, so now we have two two things in here that are that that's kind of path traced. So I'm gonna go with lit right now. I mean, he looks good. Like I said, this this model Michael did such a freaking amazing job with this model. So worth it. I'm um, gonna press G right here, so you can kind of see him just hanging out. Now this is lit uh, real time, and now this is unlit. <laughs> this is path tracing right here, and that is just insanity. So what I'm gonna do is again, I'm gonna screenshot this one because this is path tracing. So screenshot paint, man, paint is so useful. I'm gonna lit now, I'm gonna screenshot that one as well. So you can kind of see the before and after here. So you can see the comparison. I mean, decide for yourself, is it really worth it? Or is it just kind of like a hype, kind of like cyberpunk? So I'm gonna go ahead, go left right here, turn right, go right here. And then this is our See here, this is our path tracing on the right, and we have our real time on the left. So as you can see, on the right side with path tracing, our Space Marine just looks freaking amazing, right? That's insane. And the real time, again, and it's, it's one of those things like before ray tracing, you really didn't need ray tracing. Like you really don't know you need something until you have it. Because before path tracing in Unreal Engine and in Omniverse, you don't really think about it too much. You know, real time looks good. But now that you're seeing the difference between real time and path tracing, you're like, holy crap, this looks really nice. You know, so it's kind of like owning an Aria Alexa. You really don't know you need an Aria Alexa until you own one and you don't want to let it go unless you had to sell it for other things. But this is insane, okay? And like I said, this is what makes me excited about the NVIDIA Omniverse. Because even though the Omniverse doesn't have all the tools built in right now, they have the rendering, they have the path tracing in real time multi-GPU. So I think NVIDIA is gonna be really good competitor if they develop that NVIDIA Omniverse.
So before we go, let's go ahead and see if we can uh, get more information out of this scene right here. And I'm gonna go with the post-processing again. And then we'll take a screenshot for our uh, thumbnail here. And this is, this looks amazing, by the way. So I'm gonna go to 60 bounces. Let's just turn it up to 100. And then let's just, I don't know, 9999. And we'll go to path tracing now. I mean, Jesus. And this is gonna take a little bit more because that's that's quite a bit of samples there. And what I'll do is I'll uh, I'll just pause this video and then we'll we'll go to that. All right, so guys, that's pretty much it. That is the path tracing. And what I'm gonna do next is actually compare the path tracing in Unreal Engine 4 versus the Omniverse's path tracing in real time, speed and quality. So stay tuned for that. If you haven't seen my MetaHuman short film that I uploaded a couple of days ago, go ahead and check it out because I think it turned out pretty well. And I really do appreciate all your guys' support, especially those people who've purchased my courses because that is how I am getting supported uh, for this channel. So you want to make a movie in Unreal Engine 5, but you don't know how. Today is your lucky day. How to make a movie in Unreal Engine 5 by JS Films. Out now.